Peace and Black Power family. Peace and Black Mother Power. All right. Um, you already know what it is. I'm going to play the video. I finally got some time to play this video before 7 o'clock. I got a real treat for y'all at 7 o'clock. Have y'all asses in the building. Show your brother Sarnetta some love. And um, I got a real special treat for y'all tonight. Trust and believe. At 7 o'clock, it's about to go down. It's about to go down, family. Trust and believe me, Apostle, Black Jesus Minister, JJ, I'll let you in when the show is over, but you don't want no smoke. Trust and believe me. Family, I bring to you without any further ado, Professor Walter Williams. There's never been a man that ever walked away from human form or been enraged Peter Cole by the name of Jesus Christ. There's never been a man that ever walked away from human form by the name of a prophet Muhammad of Islamic tradition. I give different reasons as to why the men in the child of Israel have never been deciphered. Are we finding archaeological evidence of this language fully um, doc, like written down? No. No, no, no. You can't find no language from a, some, from a character that never walked the earth as a human being. Mesopotamia, biblical. Nimrod, biblical. Cush, son of Ham, biblical. You got Mezram, the son of, of Ham, bi biblical, so they changed his name to Egypt, okay? You got uh, Canaan, the son of who? Ham. You see that? All making a, and you got Punt, uh, son of Ham, all making up what is known as the table nation of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. The sons of Noah. Oh, that's biblical. Never walked her in human form. Um, can you let the people know who you are? Yes, my name is Walter Williams. I was born in Chicago, Illinois, raised in Chicago, Illinois, and miseducated in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, I have uh, two books that I have authored. And those two books are The Historical Origin of Christianity, and the thesis of that book is saying that there's never been a man that ever walked the earth in human form or been raised creator called by the name of Jesus Christ. My second book uh, is called The Historical Origin of Islam. And the thesis of that book is saying that there's never been a man that ever walked the earth in human form by the name of a prophet Muhammad of Islamic tradition. Now, my uh, Christianity book has been out for 29 years. And my Islam book has been out for 19 years. And uh, if an individual wants to purchase those books, you can go to Amazon uh, or you can go to any of your local bookstores in your community and you can purchase those books. Just ask for the title and give them my name there, uh, see that you have the books. And uh, so that is a little. Uh, overview on me and uh, oh by the way I, I opened up in 1911 uh, March 11 1990 I'm sorry March 11 1990 in Chicago Illinois I opened up an ancient Egyptian museum and institute and uh, uh, that museum and institute was open for 11 years until I closed it down in the year uh, January 1 2001. So, uh, and then I taught um, in two colleges, uh, Kennedy King and uh, uh, in Chicago, and also taught um, uh, 
in the grammar school or grade school for three years in uh, Chicago Hill, uh, here in Illinois. And uh, I taught grade school for three years, and uh, I was able to convey over to the children that they were descendants of the ancient Egyptians. So that was uh, uh, part of my uh, accomplishment. And if an individual want to contact me, they can contact me um, by email. Uh, you can email me at uh, V-I-E-N-E-A, V-I-E-N-E-A, at uh, email dot com. Email me at V-I-E-N-E-A, Vaina, at gmail dot com. And if you want to contact me, you and want to talk to me further, put your phone number and uh, I'll answer you back. So that's how you can contact me. And uh, we can continue on with our conversation, Brother Sonata. All right. Um, have you ever been threatened in your life for writing that book? As far as the book of Christianity, there has never been a man by the name of Jesus Christ that ever walked the face of the earth in the color creed. Have I ever been what now? Threatened. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No one has ever threatened me or even come near threatening me because I wrote that book. There I have people argue with me, mm -hmm. a, uh, that's about it, but they never physically touched me. You talked about having a discussion or debate, if you will, with Prince Asiel. Can you talk to us about that? That happened so long ago. What was that debate about? Um, yeah, can you talk to us about that? Yeah, well, that debate about is, is called the Great Debate. And that debate took place in April 1993 in a, uh, a television studio right here in Chicago. And on that debate, I debated five men, okay? And uh, Prince Asiel Ben Israel was one of them. Uh, Reverend Henry Hardy was another one. Uh, he was, he has a, uh, he had a big Christian church here back then, in 93, in Chicago. And then I debated uh, a man by the name of Manir Muhammad. Manir Muhammad was a follower of... All right, I already got the first, one of the first questions. How old is this video? This video is maybe, I think, two weeks or three weeks old. I would say three weeks old. This, this video was three weeks old. Another thing is, um, real quick... Um, I don't know what's wrong with a couple of my moderators. I ain't going to say all of them, but what the hell is wrong with some of my mods thinking that you could bang on my queen and you a mod? How how dare you do stupid shit like that? You know? I I, I don't understand it. Um, Eric Graham, what the fuck is your problem, nigga? Don't think I don't know that you be over there with Garfield and that other nigga that came in my chat yesterday on the screen. And and he, and Garfa don't let you Negroes talk about me. Don't think I don't know that. We see it, and so I, I gotta kick your your whole ass out of here, Eric Graham. Get the fuck off my channel. Get your bitch ass out of here. Niggas are sick. I try to come in and and be cool with you, you chumps, and you come up in here and want to bang all on my channel. I come back this this morning, wake up, I see this nigga with like damn near fifteen goddamn comments trolling, trolling the paw and all that. Show bitch ass off my chat, nigga. Elijah Muhammad, okay, and uh, the Nation of Islam. And then I debated a lawyer by the name of Chester L. Blair, because I'm at that time and during that time, uh, I was saying to our community, African community in in, in Chicago, that uh, we as African people living in the United States of America are not citizens of the United States of America due to the Constitution that was drawn in 1787. And we're not citizens. So the lawyer, as you know, all lawyers uh, take, the, take their oath 
before the bar to defend the Constitution. So he was there to defend the Constitution, and I was, I was there to debate uh, the Constitution that was drawn up. That Constitution that was drawn up in 1787 uh, did not make us citizens, and so I proved my point with him. And then the, then the fifth person was the host himself, W.L. Lillard. W.L. Lillard, I had been on his program prior to that, on his other TV program. So, but he, he did not like me because uh, he, he had a white host on there with him. And this white host, I questioned him. And he couldn't answer me by way of giving me an answer to my question. And the camera was on him. So he was out to get me. I, I knew that. I felt that. So anyway, he set all this up for my demise and defeat. But it didn't work like that. So the great debate is a good tape. Um, uh, and then it's got part one and part two. So let part one run out and just stay there for a while and the part two will pop in. So uh, that was the great debate. And that's what it was all about. Okay, so how do you come up with the thought of Jesus not being real? How are you able to convince people that? Well, I'm not trying to convince anyone that. That's number one. Uh, I'm not trying to convince you. I only have the information I, I put forth in the public arena. Now, if that information in the book, I help you. Uh, understand that there's never been a man that walked every human form by the name of Jesus Christ of any race, creed, or color ever walked this earth as a human being. It's only just Jesus is only a character, a religious character. So I'm not, I don't convince anyone. I bring out my facts. I go by facts. Facts are stronger than argument, more dependable than opinions, more profound than reasoning. Silence and dispute supersedes predictions and facts always ends the argument if you know the facts. So I don't argue with anyone. I bring out the facts to you, and it's, you have to decide for yourself. And if you uh, 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 prefer to hold on to a, a Jesus Christ, fine. OK? So but uh, uh, that's, that would be my answer to you on that, Brother Sonata. OK, beautiful. So talk to me about the, um, now you talk good about ancient Egypt, Kemet. And you teach that Kemet have never been deciphered. But you got people out there who claim to be Kemetic scholars and teachers, and they say they can read the metal nature. Oh, you're talking about uh, the metal nature hieroglyphic. The right. Metal Nature, same thing. Yeah, Metal Nature hieroglyphics, yeah. Right. Yeah, so, but you, now, uh, in my book, The Historical Origin of Christianity, on page 146, I have a chapter in there called The Appendix, Why the Metal Nature Hieroglyphics Has Never Been Deciphered. The first thing I got put in there is this, and I urge people to buy that book if you want to, and you can see what I'm saying about why the Meta Nature hieroglyphics has never been deciphered. Now, the first thing one has to realize is that in order for you to understand the meaning of a hieroglyphic symbol drawn by our African ancestors during the time of antiquity, ancient times, that you would have to ask them what they meant for that symbol to be. Okay, you can't, uh, you can't guess it. You can say, well, I believe. You can't do that. You have to ask them what that symbol meant to be. What do you mean for this symbol to be? That's what you have to ask them to the, to the, to the, pers to the ancient Egyptian who drew those symbols. And let them explain to you the meaning of that symbol. So therefore, if they don't explain to you the meaning of the symbol and they're not around to do that, you'll never know the meaning of it. Okay? Number two, I drew a symbol of my own in the book. And with that symbol, I asked the reader 
I said, now, this is a symbol that I drew. Do you know or can you tell me the meaning of it? The answer would be no. Who would you have to ask? You have to ask me. I drew the symbol. I know the meaning of the symbol. You see? So I give different, uh, I give different reasons as to why the Medinet hieroglyphics has never been deciphered. Now, uh, a scholar that teaches at Oxford University in, in Oxford, England, uh, she wrote a book called The Rosetta Stone, Carol Andrews. She wrote a book called The Rosetta Stone for the British Museum. And I put her quote in that she is saying that the hieroglyphics has never been deciphered. Okay? And uh, also, in my new book coming, I got a third book coming out around the end of this year or first of next year. Um, it's called Dispelling Myths of Ancient Egypt. And I, uh, I put a, another bullet in there to prove that the hieroglyphics has never been deciphered by suggesting to the reader that he or she get a dictionary called the American Heritage Dictionary. I suggest that they get this book called the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language. Now, which gives me another bullet, put it like that, to prove my point. But I'm saying that the hieroglyphics has never been deciphered and never will be deciphered. Now, in this book, the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language on page 626, it says Egyptian hieroglyphs, pictorial symbols uh, of the ancient Egyptian. It says unlegible and undecipherable. You can't decipher it. It's impossible for you to decipher. I don't care. You can argue all you want. And plus, Brother Sonetta is this. I have a thousand dollars reward that I will give to any person of any color, race, or creed that can take one symbol and decipher it. Tell me in your decipherment what the ancient Egyptians meant for that symbol to be. You tell me what they meant for, not for what you meant for it to be, not for not what Western academia meant for it to be. It's what what they, my, our ancestors, those Africans, meant for it to be. So uh, that is what I have to say about the hieroglyphics. What connection between the Ankh and the, what is your connection between the Ankh and the crucifixion? The Ankh is a symbol of life. The crucifixion is a symbol of death. Uh, which, uh, uh, the cross, which is a cross. And that is the cross of death because that dead white man is hanging on the cross by the name of Jesus Christ uh, is a, it represents death and white supremacy. And the arm comes from our ancestors um, that represents life. So that's the difference. Yeah, okay. yeah. Is there a different metanetter than the one that we know of today that Budge translated? Because we had a, a no, guess. No, Budge ain't translated the original. Who did? Budge translated the metal letter and they read it now. I know that's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, that one that Budge translated that that's read today. We had a guest on Sonnetter's show, and he said that's not the real Meta Netter, correct? Sonnetter? He right. said there's an older, is that true, Do uh, Dr. Williams? Well, see, here's the thing, you, uh, you gotta go back and trace where all of this started from to get to your question. Um, it started with Adolf Ehrman over in Germany, who in 1880 came up with the first grammatical dictionary of the hieroglyphs. That means that uh, he had a consensus uh, among the German scholars at that time to, to, to bring out uh, a hieroglyphic uh, dictionary of, of, of the meta nature hieroglyphics. So his teacher, Carl Richard Lepsius, uh, tagged onto his, his ideology. Adolf Ehrman, like I said, in 1880, came out with the first uh, hieroglyphic dictionary of the, 
of hieroglyphs. In other words, a grammatical dictionary of the hieroglyphs. Now, in 1925, it was revised. In 1934, it was revised again. Now, what is the grammatical, uh, what's to this grammatical dictionary uh, that this Adolf Ehrman person brought out and got a consensus among uh, his peers to do just that? What they did was that they put their own hieroglyphic symbols in there that, that, that made those symbols grammatical. In other words, he, he put a man walking. You know, and they say, well, that's, that, that symbol means a man walking. You know, put one sitting, that means a man sitting, so forth and so on. That's gr 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 grammatical. Now, in 1899, uh, E.A. Wallace Burge came out with his, uh, his, his uh, coming forth by day and, and night, the book of the book of, uh, book of the Book of the Dead. And uh, he, would, he, he had a takeoff from uh, Adolf Ehrman, okay? And uh, he also put different signs and symbols in there that he wanted to put in there that will justify what he's saying in this book, you see? And uh, so you got to be very careful about Adolf Ehrman, E.A. Wallace Budge, and then a third individual by the name of uh, Alan Gardiner, who came out with a great big thick book called Egyptian Grandma. Did the same thing. They put their own symbols in there. See? So I had to come up with uh, a way to stop all of this is to offer a thousand dollars to anybody, I don't care what race, creed, or color you may uh, be. I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can take one hieroglyphic symbol and decipher it for me. I'll give you a thousand dollars for it. Can't be done. Can't. Can't be done. Impossible. Because go back to the American Heritage Dictionary uh, uh, of, the, of the English language, and you turn to page six twenty six. It says Egyptian hieroglyphs, unlegible and undecipherable. They're telling you that right there in the dictionary. So now if you want to continue with foolishness, I'm not talking about you now, yes. or anybody want to continue with foolishness to try to challenge that, fine. Um, I understand what Walter is saying, and he broke it down so beautifully. Uh, for example, right, check this out. If me and you, Nepal, me and you, all of us out here, we live in now. And we create symbols, and the only one that know what the symbol of it means is us. We're the only ones that know what that means because why? We did it. We created it. It's like back in the days, remember we used to talk um, pig Latin because we didn't want moms to understand or we didn't want everybody to know what we was talking about? Back in the days, we spoke pig Latin. You know, we created some shit called pig Latin. It gotta get out of whatever. You know how I go. I forgot how that joint go. Um, and so we're no longer here. We've been going for like damn near thousands of years, thousands of years before they found out the stuff. And so now you got a group of white men and you got a group of people that comes and say, oh, this is what it had to mean. The only way you can know what it really means is that you would have to ask me. You would have to ask those people who created it. That's what I'm saying. So there's a there's a war going on between Walter Williams and those who say they can read the metal nature. Um, I, I I'm I'm cleaning more towards Professor Walter Williams at this point. The way he break it down, I'm not biased. Y'all know I love Brother Jabari. I love um Infadizi. I love all my scholars, all my comedic scholars. And so, yes, you can probably read some of it, but to say you deciphered it all, I can't go with that all the way. I can say you probably deciphered some, but not where you can read it fluently. I don't think all of none of us will ever be able to read it fluently. 
It's up to y'all. What y'all what y'all think? Write it, put it in the comment, and we can talk about it. But the hieroglyphs will never ever be deciphered because the, the, the ancient Egyptians, our African ancestors, who drew those symbols, they knew what each symbol meant for it to be. But we don't, because they they're not here to tell us, explain to us. Wow. That's my answer. So is that the same? with foolishness, I'm not talking about you now, yes. or anybody want to continue with foolishness to try to challenge that, fine. But the hieroglyphs will never, ever be deciphered because the, the, the ancient Egyptians, our African ancestors, who drew those symbols, they knew what each symbol meant for it to be, but we don't, because they, they're not here to tell us, explain to us. Wow. That's my answer. So, is that the same? as the uh, ancient Hebrew, which we're told is Phoenician. Can we say the same about that particular language, the ancient uh, Hebrew? There's no such thing as an ancient Hebrew language. Okay. Okay. Now, let's get back to, uh, let's stick with the so-called Hebrew language. Okay. Um, you got to go back to World War I. World War I is 1914 to 1918. That's World War I. During World War I, Walter Lionel Rothschild, a member of the British Parliament, took a, a chemist by the name of Cam Weissman before that British Parliament. And he, he told the British Parliament, Walter Lionel uh, Rothschild told the British par Parliament that this man, Cam Weissman, a chemist from Mansfield, England, could make them a chemical bomb to end the war. Okay? And uh, uh, because the, the Germans were helping the Ottoman Empire or the Ottoman emperors over there to build a railroad. And they was, uh, they had all that oil over there in that area of the world. So, uh, in 1917, a year before the war ended, uh, Arthur uh, Belfort, B-A-L-F-O-U-R, a member of the British par Parliament, drew up what is known in history as the Belfort Declaration. Yes. Okay? Now, that Belfort Declaration was supposed to give uh, the Zionists uh, a land over there, mm -hmm. okay, to make a statehood. But uh, when the war ended, uh, Cam Weissman made the bomb and everything. So now he's waiting to get this land over there in uh, Palestine, where it's located today. But the British reneged on that Belfort Declaration, and they didn't honor that. So, but in the meantime, Cam Weissman was prepared to receive that, according to the Belfort Declaration, drawn in 19, 1917, a piece of land over in Palestine, and it was ready to bring forth uh, uh, a dialect or language. Okay, so the language that they created in 1922 was called Yiddish. Yes. Okay, so now that's a German-based guttural dialect that's, that's man-made in 1922. Okay, so... What's man-made? The, the, the language. The Hebrew. The so-called... The Hebrew language? Yes, sir. See, see, so it, it was called Yiddish before Hebrew. Okay, Yiddish. Because they was expecting that land to ha have some statehood on there or, or some people on there, real people on this particular land, and you have to have a language to connect with that land. Yes. So therefore, uh, these Zionists created what is known as Yiddish. Okay, so 
the Balfour Declaration wasn't on it. So uh, here come Abram Stern, known in history as the Stern Gang. He was the leader of that Stern Gang, who, who blew up, his gang blew up the King David Hotel in Jerusalem. Okay? In 1940, you remember that? And uh, uh, also the Stern Gang killed two British agents over there because the British would not honor the Belfort Declaration to give them a piece of land. So, uh, when that happened, the, uh, the British and the United States of America said, well, we better do something about uh, and for these people, designers. So, Again, Yiddish, like I said before, was created for the language that it will go along with a piece of land that uh, was promised them under the Belfort Declaration, which never came about. Okay? So. It never came about? Ne ne never came about, I'll tell you. I'm, I'll tell you, it never came about. Not not from the Belfort Declaration. Okay. okay. Least, you, you know, like we've been taught in history, in, in history books, that it did, correct? Huh? We, we've been taught in history books that the Belfort Declaration did happen and that that's why they moved to, the Germans moved to in the, the Palestinian area. To Israel. No, that's not true. That's not historically, historically incorrect. But anyway, um, so they, in 1922, a dialect known as Yiddish was created, yes, sir. which is a German-based girl uh, dialect that they was going to use when they got this piece of land in Palestine, but that never came about. So. Um, so the Balfour Declaration was not, it never happened? Never honored. Okay. Okay. And, uh... So what is that over there, what they... Wait, do? I'm going to get to that Oscar. now. Don't, don't rush. Okay. It's, it's history. you got to be very patient yes. with history. Okay. So now, they created Yiddish. Mm -hmm. Okay? So therefore, um, in 1947, after killing two British agents, Stern Gang did, on the kind of they didn't honor that Balfour Declaration, and blowing up the King David Hotel in, in Jerusalem, the United States of America and, Brit and the British government said, well, we better give these people a portion of Palestine for a statehood. Okay? So they bought Cam Weissman again, right before. Uh, the UN this time, you see, before, see the League of Nations was created in 1920. The day that League of Nations known as the UN, housed in New York, you see. So they brought the same chemists back before the UN in 1947 and say, give this man a portion of Palestine to create a statehood. The United States did that. Huh? The United States did that. And Great Britain. Great Britain. Right. So, uh, in doing so, uh, the when, they, when, they, when they gave them this portion of land in Palestine for statehood, you see, from Instead of speaking Yiddish, they called that Yiddish Hebrew. You got that? They called it Hebrew. Now, what did they have to do? They had to go back into Europe and destroy and, 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 and get rid of and burn and confiscate every piece of literature, papers, newspapers, magazines, plays, everything that had Yiddish on it. That's what you're going to see it today. Uh -huh. They destroyed it 
on purpose so they can have that same language that was once Yiddish is now Hebrew. Is that why they were burning their money? Hmm? German, the Germans burnt their money and they said it was because it wasn't valuable. But uh, now that you bring that up, I wonder if Yiddish was on the German mark and if they were burning the money because of that. I really don't know. I can't, the, I can't answer that. The, after, the, after the war, they claimed that they, the money was so worthless that they just were, they were using it to heat their houses. Piles of cash of German marks. But now that you bring this history up, I suspect that they were burning, because it probably had Yiddish on it. It had some Yiddish language on it. Awesome. Well, I, no, see, the, the Zionists was not that strong in Germany to do, to do what you were saying. They probably uh, burned their mark or whatever they had over there as currency to create another, a new currency. See, had nothing to do, I don't I think it had nothing to do with uh, Yiddish being on their mark. Because, see, that would mean that the government of Germany, you see, would have had to, to do that. It's like the government of this country. They put the, on, on your dollar bill, on the back of it, they put the what? The Great Pyramid. Right. See? So therefore, uh, it wouldn't do the Germans any good uh, to have some Yiddish on the back of their currency. Is that, that they were changing currency over there. Right. So that's the, that's the reason why. Not because of the Yiddish was on there. See, it was changing currency. So uh, that's my answer to you. Well, I'd like to just go a little bit deeper, just a little further. Um, because this is very interesting. I'm learning a lot. Thank you. So with the Yiddish, can we talk to you about um, the Masoretic text going back? Because isn't when you look at the writing, the, he, the Yiddish Hebrew, it's written with with Masoretic from the Masoretes, uh, right? They they put the vowel points on it. In other words, you're talking about they, they they write with the with that uh, large black uh, with the vowel points, the dots. Script scripts on there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's uh, if you get my book, the Historical Origin of Islam, I got an alphabet chart in there, and I got a Hebrew section over there. To the extreme right, and it will show you from the very uh, first alphabets that was created by our African ancient Egyptian ancestors, uh, and you'll see where these letters are coming from. Take go from the Hebrew, that large black block letters, and look at those uh, uh, letters over in the which is called the hieratic demotic. You see, that's where they're getting it from. But they use a calidified uh, way of writing uh, their language and literature in those large black block letters, and they call that Hebrew, the Hebrew lettering. Oh, okay. I learned something new. Thank you. So now let me ask you this one. Um, in terms of the Exodus, some Hebrews say there was an exodus, and these Hebrew Israelites do anything to prove that. Did the exodus really exist? No. If you had it came a little earlier, I have literature that will back up what I'm saying. Now, in 1999, in the Chicago Metro, section of the Sun-Times newspaper. There was an article in there when they reopened the Oriental Museum and Institute on the campus of the University of Chicago, 1999. And in that article, it said this, even though scholars have searched for over 100 years they could not find any evidence of a Moses ever being in Egypt. Mm. 
They could not find any plagues brought against Egypt. They could not find any evidence of the exodus occurring in Egypt. And they could not find any evidence of slaves building the pyramid. Now this is what, this is what they said. I got the article right there in my library. Um, and I was going to have it, give it to you and uh, to prove my point of the, to the question that you asked. So Europeans, white people are saying that they told you this lie, but now they're telling you the truth. Okay? So therefore, if there's no Moses, no evidence of a Moses ever been in Egypt, then the story about Moses' mother put Moses as a baby in a basket to, to, to float down the Nile River. That's a lie. But wasn't that a story copied out of Kemet? No. Because there was also a baby floating down the river, right? In Sargon, it's Babylonian. Who? A Canaan, I think. Who? King Sargon. No, that's biblical. Uh, no, no, I'm saying uh, the extra biblical, like other other cultures have. That's a similar story. No, no, no. Anything that's related to the Bible is is, is mythology. It has no no human characters in it. Uh, all uh, no have no human beings, but all all characters. No, no, that 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 that, that didn't happen. Like that Sargon is coming out of. The Sargon is coming out of the Sumerian. Sumerian, yes. Right. Okay? And you can't have that. That's all biblical uh, characters. So that's what he, uh, excuse me, Professor, I think that's what he was asking. Is there another story? And you said there's a Sumerian story, correct? A, myth, a, myth, a mythology in, in uh, the Sumerian story about King Sargon. That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you now. Yes. It's myth. Yeah. It's biblical mythology. Okay? okay? And uh, you spoke about the Phoenicians, I believe. That what you spoke about? Um, well, before, I want to stay on the Moses and the Exodus thing because I want to ask you on record, can you speak to us about the Hyksos? Because I'm, I've heard some arguments that possibly this whole story that's about the Israelites is actually a literal story about the Hyksos leaving or being driven out of out of Egypt. What do you say about that? Well, I have a, my new book coming out, Dispelling Myths of Ancient Egypt. I have a full chapter on the repudiation of the Hyksos. Oh, wow. Good. Okay? So the Hyksos is strictly biblical. Never existed as people, as a human being walking this earth. Okay? And uh, I know you heard of Asa Hilliard. Uh, Asa, yes, of course. In 1986. Asa Hilliard. Right. In 1986, Dr. Asa Hilliard came to Chicago to give a lecture. And in his lecture, he spoke about the Hyksos. And I took him aside. I said, Dr. Hilliard, I said, there's never been a Hyksos invasion of ancient Asia. And he said, oh. I said, would you like for me to write a position paper on that and send it to you? He said, yes, do that. So I sat down. It took me a month to get all my evidence. I wrote him a letter and I put on a repudiation of the Hyksos. So there's never been any Hyksos. Y'all see? That's how real scholars do it. You see what he just said? He said he wrote Dr. H um, Asa Hiller a letter on it, and it took him a month to get all his facts together. That's how real scholars do it. They don't go and come back the next day and say, hey, I got it. No, no, he want to make sure he cross all the T's and dot all the I's and get him the evidence. See, with us, everything is fast food now. You hear that? So think about that, man. I mean, I, I can't wait to go back. I'm going back probably next month to get more information from him while he's still here on the planet. Facts. Invasion. See, that's you got to remember now. One thing you ha always have to remember is very important. 
that the ancient Egyptians never wrote a history of themselves. They never wrote a history of themselves. Hold up, say that again. The ancient Egyptians never wrote a history of themselves. So what is the metal nature on the wall that, that carved in stone? What's that about? Don't know. I told you it's never been deciphered. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't know what it's about. I agree with him though. Man. Okay. You don't agree with him? No, no, I'm processing. I, no, because I you know what? You know what? I agree. It makes sense I'm just because no one was here to understand what they meant by it. That's you right. Know, assume or you know. Guess. Guess. But what's their other? I think maybe. Right. It could be, perhaps. But may I explain? No, but there was no Egyptians on the planet when they found all of that. No. That's like it was under the ground and all of that. No, the ancient, ancient. What's that? What's she talking about? No, no, I, I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just processing this. Because what about, can you speak to us about, um, I forgot, forgive me, if there is this ancient Akkadian who could translate. What I'm trying to say is, what about the overlapping? Do we not know the sound of Akkadian? I mean, Akkadian as well, like the languages. So is it all languages that we're saying that? Aren't real? I don't understand. Akkadian comes from Akkad, the son of Shem, in the Bible, oh. as being one of the family and table of nation. Okay. Akkad, okay? Mm -hmm. That's where the Akkadians come from. Okay. So, back to the Bible again. And you can't. Oh, so you're saying it's a myth? So it cancels it out? It cancels out. Anything in the Bible cancels itself out. Wait a minute now, Professor. Now I'm getting what you're saying. Everything somehow goes, 90% of this historical information, when it comes to language, goes back to the Bible, like Akkadian, uh, the Metanetter, and they didn't exist? No, not, not the Metal Well, the not the what he's saying, the Metal Netta never been deciphered. Cipher. But he's saying all the others, yes, is a myth. So well, what is the writing, though? What writing? It's the Metal Netta. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the Akkadian. Oh. There's no Akkadians. That's myth. That's, that's Akkad is one of the sons of Shem. Well, isn't that, that full language, though? That we, hmm? Are we finding archaeological evidence of this language fully um, dot, like written down? No. No, no, no. You can't find no language from a, some, from a character that never walked the earth as human beings. You got, you got the Edomites. Come from Edom. The son, one of the sons of Shem. Okay? You got the Akkadians, like you, from Akkad, one of the sons of Shem. You got Cush, one of the sons of Ham. Cush was supposed to be the father of Nimrod. Nimrod uh, built a tower of Babel. Okay? And uh, in, in, in Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, biblical. Nimrod, biblical. Cush, son of Ham, biblical. You got Mezram, the son of, of Ham. B biblical, so they changed his name to Egypt. Okay, you got uh, Canaan, the son of who? Ham. You see that? All making it, and you got Punt, uh, son of Ham. All making up what is known as the t table of nation of Ham, Shem, and Japheth, the sons of Noah. All that's biblical. Never walked to earth in human form. Oh wow. Okay, so this is in your this is in both of your books. Well the latest book you said where you talk about the Hicks. So mm -hmm. what book is that? The, my new that? book is coming out. Uh, it's supposed to be out, supposed to be ready for publication by the end of this month. I mean the end of this year. And or the first of next year. Call it just spelling myths of ancient Egypt. And I bring all that out in there. Okay, so I have some more questions for you, please. Yeah. This is very good. So, I had... Like the video. Thumb up the video. Teacher who studies the 
as you called it, the Yiddish, but it's written in the Masoret Masoretic text, you know, with all those lines and dots. And I use the blue letter because I don't speak or really know Hebrew. But he, this Hebrew Israelite teacher, he learns it on his own, right? He knows it. What I'm getting at is, how do we approach a conversation? Okay, of course, first we got to read your books and get the information. But when we approach somebody who says, well, I know the Hebrew, and you don't, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, you're saying it does, it's not even a real language. It's a, it's a language now. now. A man-made, created language for a different, for a purpose. Okay. The purpose of that language is to uh, settle and have a, 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 a designated place that was given to Cam Weissman and uh, David Ben-Gorion, David Green, called David Ben-Gorion, and uh, uh, over there in the legal state of Palestine and, and, and Israel today. Okay. That's what that was for. So, so they can have a, a, a language. So can I say, is it, what's your, I want to hear your expertise, your professional opinion. If I have someone sitting with me and they're arguing about ancient times in the Bible and they pull out the, the Hebrew and tell me, well, you don't really understand it. How are they going to pull out a Hebrew where? From where? From the, uh, from the Bible. Ain't no, ain't no Hebrew in no okay, Bible. So, so, no, this oh, is so, a, so that's what I would do. I was going to say, how should I approach that? They say, some people say they only read the Torah. And they, yes, got, a, the Torah. they got a Torah that has nothing all but Hebrew. Hebrew. It's all Hebrew. No, no English. So I, uh, yeah. Okay, wait so now. So you're saying none of that is real? So I'm right. going to say, put that away. I'm going okay. to tell you about that now. In, night, in, in 2000, the year 2000, 22 years ago, a rabbi who teaches at the Hebrew Union College in New York City wrote a book called The Original Torah. And in the original Torah, he said there's never been an Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Sarah, getting the Esau, David, or Solomon, oh, wow. or Joshua. Okay? Now he's saying this. Then he went on to say, uh, I can I can only read the Torah allegorically because I cannot read it historically. There's no history in it. No human history. Oh, this is mythology. I keep telling people, this is mythology. Then you have a thousand dollar challenge. I got i I'll give you a thousand dollars, you know, if you can uh, decipher the meta nature. <laughs> oh well, I see. You hear that, Reggie? What do you got to say to Reggie? Hmm? What do you got to say to our brother Reggie? Reggie, you can't say anything to Reggie. Reggie's ego keeps him from learning. You hear that? Okay. Yes, I did. Keeps him from learning. He will not ever learn anything until he get that ego out of the way. Once he get that ego out of the way, and he sit down and become a student, you can't come to me like a scholar because I'm going to treat you like that. That's right. Because if you come to me like a student, I'll teach you if you ask me to do that. But he, he's not going to do that. His ego keeps him from learning. So he'll never evolve. He'll keep revolving, just doing this, round and around, like I said, right in the cage. Well, what do you think about Garfield, the Who? Dagger Squad? Who? Garfield. Who's, who are they? Well, that's Reggie's um, partner now. They, they teamed up. They teamed up. And they're going against Kimmy. Um, they are now saying, Reggie is now teaching that the Bible is, has not been stolen from Kimmy. And it's not plagiarized from Kimmy. We say, yes, it is. Anybody talking about the Bible? What I want to know. Tell me when the first created and printed Bible existed. What year did it, was this Bible created and uh, uh, where was it created? Go back. 
The ancient Egyptians, ancient Egypt is what you call in Kemet. And the ancient Egyptians who lived there never wrote a history of themselves. So you can't say the Bible comes from Kemet, but I can ask this question to the person who's going to deal with the Bible. What year was the first created and printed Bible? What country was it printed in? What's, what town in that country was it printed in? What alphabet was used to print that Bible? Who formulated that Bible to be printed? What was the ancient name of the Bible? Uh, that's the first question. Number two, I ask this question about the New Testament. That's where he beat up Apostle at. He beat Apostle. He kicked his butt when Apostle called in on that right there. He killed him on that. When was the first Bible? Apostle didn't know. <laughs> and I know Apostle watching right now. So he kicked the Apostle butt, and I know Apostle probably went and did research on it, and um, he probably got answers now. What year was the New Testament was first propounded, and by whom? And tell me uh, some of the chapters that are in there that was first propounded by the person who, who created that New Testament. Okay? Now, you got to remember this. The Old Testament is only 547 years old. The New Testament is only 506 years old. The King James Version is only 411 years old because it came out in 1611, dedicated to King James. So you got to know some history. You can't go by uh, this Bible and what you believe. What you believe is unimportant. You got to have facts, which are stronger than argument, more profound than reasoning, more dependable than opinions, silences dispute, supersedes predictions, and facts always ends the argument. That's what you got to know. You can't go by I believe. What you believe is unimportant. It's what you know that's based on facts. So, so Reggie will never, he will never learn anything because his ego is in his way. And he will not come, remove that ego and come as a student and say, could you teach me? I'd be glad to do that. But he won't, I, I'm, I'm not looking for students, no. But don't come to me like you know every, everything, that you're a scholar, and I know that you don't know. Okay? When well, he's going to tell me about a Moabite stone and, 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 and research the Bible dictionary, John L. McKenzie got a Bible dictionary out that all scholars use. And in that Bible dictionary, he says that the, the Moabites can only be found in the Bible. So how can they have a stone? A Moabite stone got Hebrew or Hebrew on the back. I had to get Asa Hilliard straight on that. So how can they have a stone that they created with Hebrew on the back when the, the, that you only find the Moabites in the Bible only? Huh? You can't do it. Now, who are the Moabites? Biblical characters, like I said. It's a, a, a biblical characters in the Bible. That non-humans. Just, just in the Bible. That's it. No humans walking the earth. They're non-human. So... Talk to us about Islam. Is Islam any different? Was there really a deity by the name of Allah and Prophet Muhammad? Did Prophet Muhammad really exist? Or is this all some type of game that they play to get into our psyche, to get into our mind? Because they know we are a spiritual people by nature. But they trying to destroy our spirit by switching with religion. This is true. What you're saying is true. There's never been a man that ever walked to earth in human form by the name of the Prophet Muhammad of Islamic tradition. That's in my second book, The Historical Origin of Islam. Okay? Now, 
if you go back to uh, the stories that is told by this uh, Prophet Muhammad leaving Mecca in 622, fleeing Mecca in 622, okay? And you go back and uh, you go and get you a shorter encyclopedia of Islam on page 390 in the Shorter Encyclopedia of Islam. They said they have no biography for a prophet Muhammad. The second thing they said on the same page 390, they cannot find any evidence of a prophet Muhammad ever living in Mecca. They can't find it. No evidence of it. You see? So why are we following these people? But it's like we don't need no proof no more. We don't even want to do the research. We just follow them just to follow them. Well, they, they, they follow them because they don't know history. They, 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 didn't, they didn't study history, human history. Human history says, consists of time, people, places, events, and literature. Literature is needed to document real time, real people, real places, and real events. That's how you do that. So uh, that's eliminated. Okay. That's eliminated out of the knowledge of uh, human history. of human history. You see that? Mm -hmm. So now, here you have a Prophet Muhammad, okay, uh, fleeing Mecca in 622 uh, A.D. That's, what the, that's, that's how the story goes, A.D. they use. I don't use A.D., I use C.E. And that uh, but the short encyclopedia said they had no data of a Muhammad ever being in Mecca. They had no biography on page 390 that of a Muhammad ever existing as a human being. Okay? So therefore, you got to uh, say, now, the, in, in Monster Germany, in the Wall Street uh, uh, paper, journal, uh, Monster, the University of Munster, Germany, built a annex building to house its, its Islamic building to, to, to teach the students from all over the world who came to Munster, Germany to learn about, uh, uh, about, about uh, Islam. They picked a man by the name of uh, Muhammad Seven Galish, that's his name, to teach that class. Muhammad Seven Galish went to the dean of, of Munster uh, University in Munster, Germany, and told them that he could not teach that class. And the reason why he said that he could not teach that class, he said, from, from further investigation, I have found out in my studies that there was no person by the name of Muhammad walking this earth. That was in the Wall Street Journal. You know. So, uh, you got to really study what you're dealing with. Now, in uh, 1870, in Syria, the AIU, AIU means Alliance Israelite Universal of Paris, France, sent scholars over into uh, Syria to create literature for the Mohammedan world. Okay? The AIU, uh, which is a Zionist organization. Okay. 
they sent these scholars over in 1870 in Syria to create literature for the Mohammedan world. Okay. Uh, they gathered the information, wrote, uh, and created a Quran. The reason why they had to do that is because uh, they had to put Abraham in that religion. See? Islam is based upon a book called the Quran. That's what it is. Based upon a book called the Quran. That's it. Okay? And uh, so therefore, they created this literature for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the Mohammedan world, putting Abraham in smack dab in that religion. Why? Because what did Abraham do? Abraham, the story goes, was 100 years old. And he went to his wife, Sarah, to have, uh, he woke up one morning, he wanted to have a baby. And he, this is how the story goes, 100 years old. Had no Viagra back then, but he wanted to have a baby. And she told him, said, man, I don't zip, I can't have no more baby, I don't zip it up many years ago. She said, go and get your handmaiden, Hagar, and she have a baby for you. He follows the instruction, got Hagar, got her pregnant, had a baby called Ishmael, the first son of Abraham. Ishmael is supposed to be the progenitor of what? The progenitor of the Muslim. Mm -hmm. Okay? The story goes that he gave uh, uh, Hag Hagar a loaf of bread and some water, and he sent both Hagar and Ishmael into the desert. And the bread ran out, the water ran out, and so in disgust, the kicked the sand and the gush of water came up. All that story is all in there. See? Now, so, who put all that in there? The AIU. They created that. You see? So now, in 1919, 49 years after they created that, which was called, today is called the Holy Quran. In today's Holy Quran, which you got interspersed in, in there, you got uh, stories uh, predicated on Jewish literature is in there. The Pentateuch and Psalms is in there. That's the Jewish literature that's interspersed in there. Interspersed in the Holy Quran today, you have the four Christian Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, in there, interspersed. You see? All that's in that literature. You see? And in 1919, after World War I, which was World War I, 1914 uh, uh, to 1918, in 1919, a year after World War I, uh, that uh, so-called uh, book called the Holy Quran was accepted by the Mohammedan world in 1919 in Cairo, Egypt. You see? And uh, six years later, seven years later, I'm sorry, they call the first meeting in Islam's history. It's the first meeting in Islam's history now, 1926, called by the new, new elected king that was put in place by the British government Abdul Aziz al Saad called that first meeting in Islam's history, 1926. So therefore, when that meeting was called, uh, he called that meeting in the Hejaz, which today is known as Mecca and Medina. Okay? So when they, uh, they, they all met, he called all of the uh, 
ruling kings around the region. Like the video. Thumb up the video. First meeting in Islam's history. Now, on page 69 in my book, The Historical Origin of Islam, I have uh, the minutes of that meeting. It's in there. See? So, I have all that to back up what I'm saying. You see? So, you have to study history. You can't go by, I believe. What you believe is unimportant to the world. It's what you know based on facts. Okay, so is there anything else you would like to say before we end this interview? Uh, let me ask you, what do you think about the nation of Islam? Do you think that is a better way for our people than the Bible or the Quran? What about the message to the black man? Well, see, all religions uh, takes you away from your own personal humanity. Takes you away. You don't know anything about yourself. Mm. But you dwell on this religion. Good point, good point. See? So it steals from you as a human being. So you don't need no religion in your life. You need to know the truth. And the truth will do what? Make you free. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, family? Did you hear that? <laughs> religion take away from your being, take away from who you are. Let's get it. Let's listen. Now this is the doctor, the professor saying this. People than the Bible or the Quran. What about the message to the black man? Well, see, all religions all oh. uh, takes you away from your own personal humanity. Takes you away. You don't know anything about yourself. Said correct. Look at these Negro Hebrew Israelites. When you see them on their channels talking about people's mothers, talking about people's wives. See, it's all right if people who say they are not a part of the Bible or they don't believe in God, I can, I, I can see them doing that. They can do that shit all day. But when you got the people who say they are of the Lord, they believe in the Lord and they follow the laws and they follow the laws and statutes and the commandments, and then you listen to that shit that they be doing to people, you be like, hold on, man. Hold up, man. This can't be. Because it have taken, taken them away from their what? Let's hear that again. I want to hear that part again. It take them away from what, um, Professor? It's what you know based on facts. That's right. Okay, so is your belief is not important. Like say before we end JJ, did you hear that? Your belief is not important, JJ. It's what you can prove, brother. <laughs> it's what you can prove. In this interview. Uh, let me ask you, what do you think about the nation of Islam? Do you think that is a better way for our people than the Bible or the Quran? What about the message to the black man? All right, here you go. Listen up good, brother JJ. I see you saying shaking my head, but I'm not just talking to you, Jay. I'm just talking to Hebrews in general, brother. Please get them to listen to this. Well, see, all religions... Uh, takes you away from your own personal humanity. Do you get that, JJ? Look at how a lot of you brothers behave right now. I'm quite sure your mother didn't instill this in you. And when I say your mother, I'm not talking about JJ. I'm quite sure I'm talking about the Hebrews. Your mama didn't instill these kind of values in you. Right or wrong, y'all? Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm speaking to you, Hebrews. Am I right or wrong? You know your mother taught you better manners than that. Talking to women, talking about women the way y'all do. I was on Quinnah's show earlier today, and he had a brother on there. I wish JJ would have came through. And the brother was straight up talking about women are not supposed to teach. He wasn't playing no games. He was saying, F Africa, the hell with the Africans. They got nothing over there. And the sisters, the women, y'all shouldn't be teaching this Bible. He was going in. And, and it make me question Kwana because, brother, you say you love Africa. You're not about that. But damn near everybody that was in your chat and your moderators was going in on, on Africa, bro. So are they, I don't get that shit, man. In your own chat, your people was going against Africa. 
and talking about Africa ain't shit, F Africa. All of them was in there doing that. So, man, I don't, I don't get y'all dudes, man. Takes you where you don't know anything about yourself. Mm. But you dwell on his religion. Good point, good point. See? So it steals from you as a human being. So you don't need no religion in your life. You need to know the truth. There you go. And the truth will do what? Make you free. There you go. So religions only add confusion. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Y'all just heard him say it. Religion only adds confusion. And this is why y'all hear me say all the time. Y'all say God is not the author of confusion. So if God is not the author of confusion, y'all all should be on one page. All of y'all should read the scripture and be able to get the same thing out of the scripture. Because if everybody be one scripture, 10 Hebrews, and all 10 of y'all got something totally different and doing your own thing, who's really the author of the confusion then? Is it you or is it God? I, I'm talk black to me, man. I need to know this. It's only going to give and bring confusion. Like Professor said, man. That we, Africans living in the United States of America, are the descendants of the greatest people that's ever lived on earth. Say that so again. So why don't you call, why don't you say, I'm an ancient Egyptian. Go ahead. You don't need to be no black Hebrew Israelite and all that foolishness. So right. You say that. <laughs> How do you prove that we, our ancestors, were the ancient Egyptians? How okay. do you prove that? Very, very, very simple. Um, do you believe that an African people, during the time of antiquity, built a great pyramid? Yes. Okay, in Africa. Yes. Okay, in the continent of Africa, in Egypt. Uh -huh. Okay, you believe that now? Yes. Yes, I no. know it. I don't believe that. You don't believe that? I know that. Hey, there you go, my man. <laughs> okay. I know that. You know that, right? Yeah. Do you believe that a people during the time of antiquity walked this earth as the Greeks? I know that. Okay. You got your camera on? Yes, the camera's on. Okay. But wasn't they black people? No. The Greeks? No. The Greeks were no. black? No. The no, 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 no. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. All right. Do you believe that a people walked this earth known as the Romans during the time of antiquity, known today as the Italians? Yes. You believe that, right? Did you know that? The Romans that known today as the Italians? Of course. Yeah. You didn't know that. Rome? I've been to Rome. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, let's go back. Today, as I speak, the Greeks are still around on earth calling themselves what? Greeks. Is that right? Mm -hmm. The Romans are around on earth calling themselves, what, Italians, right? Right, in Rome. Now, what happened to the ancient Egyptians? Where, where, where are their ancestors? Huh? Where are their ancestors? Right here. There you go, my man. You got it, my brother. And uh, there's a book out that came out in 1939, by, uh, by, uh, uh, by, written by Theodore P. Ford. It's called God Wills the Negro. <laughs> yes. In his book. God Wills the Negro. He was tell he's showing you in half of his book, he's showing you and telling you that we as African people in this country are the descendants of the ancient Egyptians. He got pictures in there uh, of, of Negro women looking just like the, the statues over there in Egypt and so forth and so on. You know what he said? He said the ancient Egyptians, in this book, he said the ancient Egyptians vanished and the Negro appeared. The ancient Egyptians vanished and the Negro appeared. Bing! So that's who we are. He's telling you that. Okay? See, see religions destroys the human being. Keeps you from thinking. You don't have to think. All you have to do is believe. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think about nothing. Right. God damn. God damn, Walter Williams. 100%. When you look at these Hebrew niggas, that's all they do is believe. You don't have to think. Just believe and memorize the scriptures. <laughs> and when people talk about it, 
Just say, I believe. That's all they do is tell you, I believe. But they can never give you no goddamn facts. Goddamn. Walter Williams, man. Killing these niggas, man. I say niggas because they nigga was created in America by the white man. And the white man shaped and molded these niggas' minds in that Bible, professor. That's why I'm doing whatever it takes. I'm doing what I do to really go in. And JJ going to come home one day. Watch and see. Because JJ is a good brother. He likes to study history. And he going to stumble upon some shit that's going to make his ass say, hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just like the brother that I'm bringing on tonight at 7 o'clock, y'all. Be in the building. It's going to be crazy. JJ, whatever you do, do not come in and question this brother. I don't want the embarrassment on my platform, brother. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. The Romans are around on earth calling themselves, what, Italians, right? Right, in Rome. Now, what happened to the ancient Egyptians? Where, where, where are their ancestors? Huh? Where are their ancestors? Right here. There you go, my man. You got it, my brother. And uh, there's a book out that came out in 1939 by, uh, by uh, uh, so you confusing Hebrews with Christians. No, the hell I'm not. You, you, you just using the word Hebrews, but nigga, all y'all niggas are Christians. All of y'all in mysterious clothing. That's all it is. You're all the same. Ain't nothing different. But there is a little difference in your teaching mentality. That's all. That's all it is. But you're all both the same, man. Dang, come on, man. All y'all believe in the same spook God, the same demon, the devil, um, all of that nonsense. So stop trying to separate yourself. Stop trying to do that. I ain't going to let you do it. By, written by Theodore P. Ford. It called God Wills the Negro. <laughs> yes. In his book. God Wills the Negro. He was tell, he's showing you in half of his book, he's showing you and telling you that we as African people in this country are the descendants of the ancient Egyptian. He got pictures in there uh, of, of Negro women looking just like the, the statues over there in Egypt and so forth and so on. You know what he said? He said the ancient Egyptians, in this book, he said the ancient Egyptians vanished and the Negro appeared. The ancient Egyptians vanished and the Negro appeared. Bing! So that's who we are. He's telling you that. Okay? See, see religions destroys the human being, keeps you from thinking. Go ahead. Religion destroys a human being and it keeps you from thinking. Family, put a one in the chat if you agree with, with Walter Williams. Professor Walter Williams have just said, please put a one in the chat. I want to see where my people at. JJ should be putting a one in the chat instead of putting we took over y'all Israel. Come on, man. Stop with the dumb stuff, JJ. Put a one in the chat if y'all agree with what Professor just say. Look at JJ. Look at look at all the Israelites out there. It destroys their thinking. They can't even think rational anymore. They can't even think with common sense anymore. Right? Even when you show them in their own text, they still against it. They are against black women. They are against black women teaching the teaching in the Bible. They are against that. Oh my God. I don't know what else to say to y'all, man. You don't have to think. All you have to do is believe. There you go. You don't have to think about nothing. Right. Just believe. Just, just believe. And so, and so I believe that I am a black Hebrew Israelite. You believe that? Fine. What's your evidence? Go ahead. Where? What is the historical origin of black Hebrew Israelitism? Where's your evidence, JJ? Where's your historical evidence of black Hebrew Israelitism? <laughs> huh? Where is that? Apostle, I know you in there. Where is that? Source the hell up. Source up or shut up. I ask people that black Hebrew, they can't tell me. What is the historical origin of a black Hebrew Israelite? Mm. Okay. Let's go to the... 
That's your question. What is the historical origin of a black Hebrew Israelite, JJ? I'm saying, I'm asking you that question. What is your historical origin of a black Hebrew Israelite? And I'm going to ask 10 Hebrews that, and I'm going to see the uh, 10 different answers. Watch. I'm writing that down. That's going to be my next question for all y'all Hebrews. Origin of where the black Hebrew Israelite come from. Uh-oh. We're going to go to the origin of that yes. now. Let's go. Uh, in 1860, the AIU, the Lawrence Israelite Universal of Paris, France, that group, that Zionist group, took the Bible and told the world that we are the Jews of the Bible. Okay? That's in 1860. Eight years later, a Pentecostal, African Pentecostal, Pentecostal uh, holiness movement was created. Where in Chattanooga, Tennessee in 1868, these Negroes said, we are the black Jews of the Bible. This is the origin of black Hebrew Israelitism. See? So in 1868, they came out, the Pentecostal, the Pentecostal are uh, their holy rollers, sanctified P Negroes. Cherry. See? Cherry was one of those people, right? Hmm? One of the founders was Cherry. I think his name is uh, Fred. Founders, founders of who? The founders of that movement. I was just agreeing with you. Okay. They came out with, in 1868, with a, a Pentecostal, holiness movement that was created in Chattanooga, Tennessee in 1868. At the turn of the century, in New York, a group of Negroes began to say, we are black Hebrew Israelites. Frank Cherry. She's talking about Frank Cherry. I'm, I'm, I'm giving a name to what you're saying. It was in 18... Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrew Israelites are always saying somebody is wrong. Look at Gideon. They always claiming that somebody is wrong and they know goddamn everything. Nah, my brother, I ain't going to say nigga. My brother, the whole goddamn Bible was wrong, brother. Apostle told us that. Black Jesus minister told us that. The whole Bible is wrong. What are you talking about? So, of course, you're going to think someone is wrong and the Bible is right. But every time we get to something, what's the first thing y'all do when we reading it from the text? Oh, no, nah, brother, you know, um, that right there, that was that was translated wrong. The proper thing is it, you got to go to this to go to the, the blue letter and break down what this word mean. And, dude, we already read the translation. We got to read another translation. <laughs> How many translation we got to read to get to the truth? Everybody got a translation, but nobody got the original text. Ain't that a damn shame? Uh, it was no, I'm sorry. It was well. You can continue, Professor. But I was just saying, Frank Cherry was one of those founders. Who? Frank Cherry. Okay. Yeah, you, so I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Familiar with Frank Cherry? Huh? He's Are one of the familiar? founders of... No, I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in Frank Cherry. Right, right. Because I'm interested in the, the origin of black Hebrew Israelitism. Yes, he's one of the... See, founders. that's more that's more important than Frank Cherry. I'm giving you the, the origin of black Hebrew Israelitism, founded by the Pentecostal holiness movement in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in 1868. That movement at the turn of the, of the 20th century moved to New York City. And the Negroes in New York said, we are black Hebrew Israelites. That's where they, they come, they put that on there, those Negroes in New York. And then that movement went into Chicago, Illinois, where a man by the name of Ben Carter, known as Ben Ami, and that's the organization that Prince Asael Ben Israel belonged to. 
See? So that gives you the foundation of the origin of black Hebrew Israelitism. Let's see. But do you have a problem with it if you see them doing the work? And the work is trying to organize their people in the community. Stop the violence. I see. I see. Oh, uh, that's well and good. But then they, there's other things I could tell you what they have done. That's horrible. But, you know, I'm going to go into it on the camera. Yeah, but, we don't need to go. You said you're going to go into it. I said I won't go into right. it. Right, I agree. Okay, yeah, I won't go into it on the, by the camera. Rolling. But anyway, right. um, so what I'm trying to say is that I always go to the origin of what the subject matter is. If you don't get the origin, you don't have the foundation. If you don't have the foundation, you're just out there. And what you, what you need to do, we as African people, we need to take the Bible and throw it in the garbage can. Get it out of our lives. We have to find our way back to, and find our way back to who we are as an African people. But if we throw the Bible in the garbage can, how can you then go in and bring your people out? You got to know it in order to bring the people out of it, right? That's, what, that's my role. You got to, you, what you should be asking me, what do you replace the Bible with? If you throw it away. History of themselves. Hey, that's you go. History of who you are. Right. We are as an African people. Our history did not start with no black Hebrew Israelitism. Our history started in Egypt, in a continent called uh, Africa, in a country called Egypt. What about Nubia? Nubia is part of Egypt. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's all part of it. Okay? So, a Nubian and the ancient Egyptian, one and the same. Yeah. Did you know about the Pentecostal Holiness Movement? Yes, I did. Huh? In 1868? Yes. Who told you that? I studied it, I found out. And who? I did my research on Crowdy, Cherry, all of those founders who just picked up the Hebrew faith and started saying they're Hebrew Israelites. Okay, I got um, you. So I come from a different angle. I understand the history and the facts, mm -hmm. but um, I do a lot of, now don't call me pseudo, I do a lot of metaphysical. I'm actually a metaphysical teacher. I, when I said the esoteric earlier and the occult, I never gave you that, I love you. You can't use metaphysics for anything. I know, so, uh -oh. so that's okay. That's what I want to ask you about. I want to ask your position on where you stand about the metaphysical. Metaphysical is beyond the, beyond the, uh, the physical. You know Reverend Phil Valentine. That's what Phil Valentine yeah, I, I know. Phil Valentine. Um, Bobby Hemmett. Bobby Hemmett and uh, 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 what's his name? He died. Uh, Devil Blair. Africa. Blair. That's right. All of them. I know. I know. See, I know. But you can't use. They're trying to use metaphysics for for history. Right. And you can't do it. See, I can look at one thing, and I can use. Uh, met, I can metaphysicalize that one thing, and then you come back and look at the same thing, and you metaphysicalize that that same thing. But we have two different opinions. Right. That's not, see, so you, you can't, history doesn't make you do that. Right, history don't have two different opinions. Hey, but, there you go. But this is the thing, I need to be clear. <laughs> That's a good point. I know, but I, I like need to that. be clear on this. I'm not, I never say that history has two points. I believe, uh, okay, there's something called the expensive tissue hypothesis. You are now? The, what? Expensive tissue hypothesis, and it is a theory about the ancient um, species, the hominids, that started to eat meat, and we all started to conceptualize God. So when you, I'm agreeing with you. When, you. when you say it's myth and it's made up, I actually agree with what you're saying in a, in, in a way where we as a people try to conceptualize God. I wanted to ask you, do you believe in, are you an atheist or do you believe in a, 
a higher power because Go ahead. the reason I'm asking is with your knowledge and the logic and the history you believe if you are a theist if you do believe in God then that's where I can relate that's where I can have a conversation about um, the metaphysical and and these and these stories because we a this is an actual scientific uh, hypothesis that we as humans we, we weren't humans yet we were like um, Australopithecus and uh, Homo, erect, Homo erectus we started to eat meat we started to eat meat and when we ate meat our, Who, our brains developed 60 percent larger who said that it's science scientist Bi biologist, okay. Uh, archaeologist. Okay, if I ask the scientists, but Mr. Sa go ahead. I'm sorry. But I wanted to finish the, co the yeah. The, go, go ahead. The reason I'm talking about that is we then started to have higher thought, and we started to look at the cosmos, talk about God, philosophize, start to have intelligence. I want y'all to see our elder, our brother, Apostle's comments. Apostle is so confused. The brother thinks that he is not in a religion. This is the confusion that religion brings you. Here's one of them right here. Here's a confused brother, and he's one of our elders, and he thinks that this type of religion have always been here. He don't understand. He don't. He can't even fathom that this is all ain't nothing but a religion, a man-made religion, a man-made concept of God and the devil. He don't understand that this stuff is not real. Apostle, in his elderly age, will go on to the realm of the Egungos, which is the ancestors, believing that God somehow is going to come and wake him up like Jesus did when he went over to the grave site and you seen them Negroes jumping up out the graves and running through the town and shit. That's what apostle really believe. He think that the Most High is going to wake him up and bring him up into the heaven, wherever that is. I don't understand, my beloved. I don't understand my beloved waiting to get this damn old and acting like a damn fool man i don't understand it he thinks he is in a way of life this is not a way of life apostle it is a religion beloved intelligence and that's where you come in where you say these are myths we started to create these things from ourselves what things these stories these So you see my brother in the building. He go by the name of Kristen Ninja. He's finally waking up. He said, so then Kemet is made up? Yes, Kemet is made up by man. What part you don't understand? If you think Kemet is not made up, then you are telling me that it came down from, from, from above or something like some mysteries came out and put that there. Brother, Kemet, the metal nutshell, was all created by man and woman. I don't know what parts you don't understand. We ain't dealing with spookism over here, beloved. Kemet was made by man. I don't know what else to tell you. It was all made, man-made, just like the goddamn Bible, just like the Quran. It's man, it came out of men's thoughts, brother. Wake up already, man. Y'all grown-ass people. These gods, right? <laughs> That's your problem. So, but, well, but one moment, please, with all respect. I understand. Uh, but, but see, uh, see, this is the thing. I get what you're saying because 
religion has beat beliefs into people and they have programmed people to uh, hate themselves and believe in another uh, oppressor's culture and it has damaged us as a people. So there's a lot of slave trauma. But when I'm not talking, I, I'm all for you. I'm behind you all the way. Tear that down. Religion is bad. But when we sit, and I'm going to talk to you, when we sit and we conceptualize God, like with our higher thinking, we, where is it wrong? I want to ask you, are you a theist? And I'm going to hand it over to you. And is it wrong if we do start to create these concepts, not pushing them onto each other? But is it wrong for us to create a concept of God? Like oh, I saw your beautiful tile. I saw the tile in your bathroom with the with the um, the God the, the um, meta netter. I guess so. I see you have a respect for it. What I'm trying to ask you is, how do we hold on to our beliefs and respect it, and also reject religion? Because I'm saying this. He says I'm going going. Because you say throw the Bible away, throw the Bible away. But where do we go where we can just have our own beliefs and not push them onto each other, but still have our concept of God. So oh. now I'm going to Okay. See, what you're saying about this theory that you have brought forth, and you call it a theory. I heard you say it was a theory. It's actually not even a theory. It's a hypothesis. Okay. It hasn't even become a theory. Okay, well, that's the same thing. Yeah. They, 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 they present it yes. in that way, both ways but still based on a theory coming from someone. Yes. Okay? And that someone, the theory, you can hold three positions for a theory. You can believe the theory, disbelieve it, or be neutral. That's number one. Theories are no good because they are man-created according to that individual's thinking or who puts the theory out there. That's his thinking. See, because I got something else for for that same man. Now, you speak about God. The question has to be asked, who is this man called God? Because God is a man. If you don't believe that God is a man, go to church, and the reverend in the church will tell you that God created man in his own image. Is that true? Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says, yes. Okay. If you go to the dictionary, that means, and you look up God, they say God in the dictionary is a male deity, mm -hmm. a supreme being, the second uh, definition. But it says a male deity. That means that God is a man still, right? Then, uh, so who is God that you got, uh, uh, if you ask a person, say, pardon me, young lady, you, you believe in God? Yes. Have you seen God? Have you ever seen God? Have you ever seen a picture of God? The answer would be no. It's just an idea that's been planted in your mind about God. Okay? Now, I'm telling her to come on home. What do you mean, come on home? Will you just no. let him? Wait, wait, wait. You, you see? So this, this God kind of said, He did it. No one has ever seen God. Go ahead. God is in your mind floating around. I agree. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you who God is. Okay. I'm going to tell you who God is. Uh-oh, go ahead. I'm going to tell you who God is. Now you listen to this. God is a man. Is that right? Yes. According to the Bible. No, it's according to common sense. Okay. According to religious theology. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. According to common sense, according to religious theology. God is a man. Okay. Now, uh -oh. is it gonna go away? I don't know. if you uh, uh, understand about there are 80 billion human beings walking this earth as human beings. Are you aware of that? Okay, 80 billion human beings walking this earth of all races, creeds, and color. Okay? And each one of those 
uh, humans, including you and I, we're all part of the 8 billion, uh, have a father and a mother, or had a father if he's dead, and he's dead, you know. So therefore, so who is God that's a man? Every human being, 80 billion humans, have their own personal God. You know who that is? Your father. That I want everybody to take and pay attention to the, what's on the screen, coming from a God-loving, God-fearing man. Look how insulting he can be. He posed to be a man of love. He posed to be a man in good spirit. But you see, the Most High tells you not to not to talk trash about, call each other names. See, here's apostle. He calls himself apostle. And he's already breaking the Torah. See, they break scripture every time. He posed to be better than us. I could say it because I don't believe it. I could call him an airhead, a bonehead. But he's not supposed to behave like me. Because why? He say he believe in God. He say that he is a man of God. And so I show you, and I could get the scripture if you want me to pull the scripture, where it tells you not to use false, um, not to call each other names. I could show you that, brother. But I think you know what I'm talking about. But see, these guys don't believe it in their heart. They study it, but they don't practice it. And that's what that's the hardest thing that they can do is practice being righteous. They don't have that, man. Use his sperm to impregnate your mother. Hey, that's God. Because he's a, is, is your father a, 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 a man? Yes. Yes. So therefore, every human on earth has a God and a goddess. Okay? That's your mother and your father. So is there a God that's floating around in the ether? No. Why? Because every human, if you understand it, has their own personal God. That's right. Damn, well, Professor, do y'all remember saying something like this, teaching this, when I said that I'm the God of myself? And God don't only exist in me, but also the devil. And I said, yo, we are God in the devil. Um, you have a higher self and a lower self. That's in every man. And, they, and, and I say, yeah, there's no God more supreme than, I'm, than me. And you should feel the same way that there's no other God that's more supreme than you. That's why you hear people say, I ain't afraid of no man. The only man that I'm afraid of is God. That's yourself. And, and, and look at look at my man. Look at look at the Christian brother. <laughs> he is so confused, it's pathetic, man. He is so confused, it's pathetic. And so, what I want to do, brothers and sisters, is I'm getting ready to leave out because, like I tell you, Gideon, get your ass up in here. You're gonna need to see who I got coming up at seven o'clock. It's like how many minutes? Nine minutes to seven o'clock. This is going to be one y'all don't want to miss. Trust and believe me. I'm getting ready to end the show and I'm getting ready to start a new show. I'm going in, man. I've been up for two days trying to wake my people up. I, I need to get paid, man. I, <laughs> I was on Quinn's show today, right? And they thought they had me. It was a Hebrew brother. And he said, he asked me the question. He said something. And he said, oh, yeah, Sarnetta do debates because he's trying to get money. And I said, you absolutely right. Not only am I trying to get money, but I'm trying to educate the minds of our people. But I'm damn sure trying to get paid as well. Like, since when that becomes, you know, a, a sin where I'm not supposed to try to get paid for my work. I work for the people. I work for you, brothers and sisters. I don't work for the European and I don't knock those who do because you got to pay the bills. So he thought he had me. You know, I guarantee you that Negro worked for the white man. And if he don't work for the white man, his wife probably do. And if she don't, um, your family do. So cut it out. Stop it, man. Y'all got to stop the false shit. And then the brother, 
if y'all go look at it, y'all see it. He puts up an image of sisters, right, in bikinis. These niggas hate women so goddamn much. He puts up a picture of women in bikinis in the outfit at the um parade. They had a parade, a West Indian Day parade. You know how they get it in. And he goes, saw, is this permissible? Is if, if your daughter can do this and can see, brother, number one, my daughter's a grown ass woman. She's grown. She lives her life. I could give her advice, but I can't tell her what to do. I can tell her how to do it. It don't mean she would take, you know, she have her own mind. My, my baby got her own mind. She always going to be my baby. You know? But she ain't going to do that. But what I'm saying is, he puts up a picture of like four women, black, beautiful women, and say, look at them. Look at them. The most high is going to kill them. The most high is going to get them. I said, well, why, brother? Because they dress like that for an event. Dudes is crazy. Dude is crazy, man. And with that, family, I'm going to talk to y'all later. I'll be back in about five minutes, and we're going to get this thing rocking. We're going to get this thing rolling. Call all the naysayers. Let them come out. Let them see what's going on. And I'm just going to let you know, man. I'm just going to let you know. Where we at? Where's that thing at? Damn, where's it at? Oh, I got it. Here we go. Let me see what I want to close out with. Let me see what I want to close out with. There we go. I'm going to close out with this right here for y'all. On a good note, let me close out with this and um, come back in the building. I got the chat already ready for y'all. Make sure y'all come right back within minutes. Because if you don't, don't be mad at me. I told y'all what y'all was going to miss. Don't be mad at me. Peace and Black Power, fam. We out. Close out time. Uh, where we going with it? Uh, uh, now where we going with it? A man, 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 Going back to Kemet, styling, profiling. It's been a long time. I mean, yeah. About 3,000. Uh, Man, we got to bring it back. Uh, the days and times of living is getting whack. I'm going back to Kemet, styling, profiling. It's been a long time. I mean, yeah. About 3,000. Uh, Man, we got to bring it back. Uh, the days and times of living is getting whack. I seen kingdoms come and I seen kingdoms fall. You can check it for yourself. You can read it on the wall like graffiti on the wall. Metal nets is what it's called. I taught y'all in the past. Now I'm back to teach you all how to elevate and repent from filthy ways. I know it's hard, but it feels good to fast for 30 days. I got y'all searching for the land that's across the burning sands. Where the men turn into gods and the gods turn into men. The jewel of the Nile is in the motherland. Each one teach one, so go tell your brother, man. You're feeling down, then you got to snap back like a rubber band. Lord, going back to Kemet, styling, profiling. It's been a long time, I mean, yeah. about 3,000. Uh, man, we got to bring it back. Uh, the days and times of living is getting whack. I'm going back to Kemet, styling, profiling. It's been a long time, I mean, yeah. about 3,000. Uh, man, we got to bring it back. Uh, Sometimes the living is getting whack. Hey. All the words I chant when I come forth by day From the night, these sacred chapters I recite Do my voodoo every day till I feel some things are right Speaking in words of power, speakers get blown Ancient tradition, deep in your bones Ancient wisdom, speaking in poems Melodies take you deep in the zone I'm going back to Kemet, styling, profiling It's been a long time, about 3,000 Man, we got to bring it back uh, The days and times of living is getting whack I'm going back to Kemet Styling, profiling It's been a long time I mean, yeah. About 3,000 uh, Man, we got to bring it back uh, The days and times of living is getting whack 
Too many youth wanna ride in the eye. I try to tell them about the eye and I and In my presence, I got y'all feeling divine essence. Woo. I come through dropping jewels that's full of timeless lessons. Uh. Not Egyptian, I'm comedic, spitting poetic relics uh. from the highest mind up to the skies to find where I am headed. Uh. I come when I be spitting, y'all be playing, hating me. I don't know, probably cause I'm serious like A and B. Uh. And see, we are like sometimes more than we would like. I got the gift of gab, I was born to speak on mics. Uh. Got raw in me glowing, now I shine like skies in Cali. I represent the hood, and that hood is the Nile Valley. They call it Hoppy. The illest of the niggas, nah, that's not me. I'm that godly representative. Spit the hottest sentences with the eye for rule. I see the evil that lurks in you. I live by ten virtues that stops me from hurting you. I use oracles, so nowadays I plan better. Now I walk in the presence of God's angels and ancestors. Walking my path, speaking in code, talking in math. I got an inner divinity, mental serenity. I walk in my eye, even on my path alone. And in these zone, man, I got heart like Indiana Jones. I'm not a raider, but a razor of the lost on the monarch of a righteous covenant you ain't liking it you loving it i show y'all sacred ways from the ancient of days the metaphysical master manifesting the greatest displays of mind control connect the spirit mind and the soul i rhyme with flows that opens up your mind so you grow like the trees but of course not the kind that you smoke but the kind that keeps you rooted in tradition i bring it back like how it was in the beginning Back to Kemet, styling, profiling. It's been a long time. How many years? About 3,000. Uh, Man, we got to bring it back. Uh, the days and times of living is getting whack. I'm going back to Kemet, styling, profiling. It's been a long time. How many years? About 3,000. Uh, Man, we got to bring it back. Uh, the days and times of living is getting whack. is the champ and I'm the chief. <laughs>